Well, the sky, it got dark, it turned purple and green. It got so thick, it got nasty and mean. Singer-songwriter Matt Ray takes the playlist by storm, and a collection of northern musicians play favorites with Duluth Does Dylan. We we're really big fans of Duluth music, and we want to show it off, and this is the way we do it. I'll make a few little lines. Little details for visual art are super duper important. Glassblower Tony Mashad scores us sets up shop at the Armory Fire Arts Center. These artists and more music straight ahead on the playlist. Don't you come in, blow the soul house down. Funding for the playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. He's a storyteller and a poet with guitar in hand. Please welcome Matt Ray to the playlist. See that Minnesota moon Through the window by the side of the bed I can get that feeling coming soon Night starts to go to my head Trying to fall asleep On this cool July night I'm trying to rest them weary bones for this morning light I can hear that truck, it's a screaming down old highway 21 at dusk I keep on losing what I found and I know someday I must stop my mind from going to all those places that should not go I stop myself from ever knowing all the things that I should know I can taste the dust on my teeth And the dust goes down my throat I know and believe there's something underneath Well, just don't stay that for hope And I get this feeling And it makes me want to know can't turn away from it cause it burns down in my soul that Minnesota moon through the window by the side of the bed and I get that feeling coming soon
I love glass because it's so malleable. When it's hot, you can move it around. When it's cold, it's very, very, it holds detail very well. When it freezes up, it, uh, an edge stays an edge, but then when you heat that edge, it rounds. And so in that way, it's a very sculptable material. All right, I like it. Our shape is looking nice. Our color scheme looks pretty nice. Oh, let's start throwing a few bits on there. My name is Anthony Mashad Scorza. I own Scorza Art Glass, which functions out of the Armory Fire Art Center. I'm a glass blower, and we've been blowing glass here for about six weeks now. Glass is very, very rhythmic um, because it's always moving and turning, and the beat slows down a little bit as it gets cooler and cooler. And so, yeah, usually when I'm in here blowing glass, the tunes are cranked up, you know, and I think the other artists like it, but I'm never sure. And that's a very pretty bit, but I want to add a little texture to it, so. The glass is always has a mind of its own and wants to do things, and it's your job to to guide it into the shape and design that you like. By working alone, the key is to have everything set up so it's where you want it, so that when you get there, your one spare hand is useful. It's all about pre preparation, basically. 14 years ago was my first glass experience. I was hooked right away. They call it getting the glass bug. Uh, the immediacy of it. You can make things very quickly. You can also fail very quickly. There's this kind of, this life to it more than other materials that I've worked with. My work itself, uh, you can look for, you look for fun. Some of the fish have smiles and all the animals have a little smirk on their face like they know something they shouldn't. <laughs> Little details for visual art are super duper important because you'll just, it just won't look right. And no one, you can't quite put your finger on it sometimes until you fix it. When I first started making the octopies, I couldn't figure it out. And then like, it took me three or four of them to realize why they didn't look good. Front two legs are almost always split because he's moving. And so he's usually propelling himself forward. And so just when I first split those front two legs, it was like, oh, that's a winner, you know? I'm inspired by new things every day. Nature, people, um, colors, you know, uh, shapes. The, the vessels are all very shape orientated. We're looking for symmetry and beauty. We're trying to do something that's gonna be inspiring to people and let them take a little chunk of that home with them, you know. And then on with the big gloves. And then into the big oven. Artwork can be subtle or very pronounced, but whatever it is, it's, uh, when you bring it into your living space, it's gonna affect it in one way or another. And if it's something that you value quite a bit, I feel like it's a positive thing for everyone involved. We're at the Sacred Heart Music Center. We're bringing it all back home. Duluth Does Dylan is underway. We have Tim Nelson, co-producer with Tom Fabjans. Thanks for joining the playlist. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having us. Okay, so yeah. tell me about the project. Well, it's the fourth in the series. We started this, uh, the first, I mean, we didn't think we were gonna do a series, but back in 2000, we did a record um, to highlight Duluth musicians and uh, pay tribute to Duluth's uh, native son. Bob Dylan. You have some interesting uh, rules. No repeat songs and no repeat bands. Right, so every five years we've done another one. Uh, like I said, we had no idea we were gonna be doing four of them. Uh, I think we generally think we'll never do another one again by the time it gets to the end. <laughs> no, uh, and yeah, no repeat songs. Luckily he uh, has a lot of songs I hear. So how do you put the word out, Tom? Hey, we're doing this, and if you want in, jump in, or do you seek them out? Uh, we kind of seek them out. You know, not everybody is able to do it that we reach out to. 
Uh, so we have a pretty large list of bands that we start with. I think there must have been almost 40 bands on it and uh, had it narrowed down to 15, 15 acts per CD. Yep. That's uh, the max that'll fit on there. That's nice. I like the figure, 15 is good. Any favorites that come through on this particular compilation? Woodblind was really fantastic. I mean, it's so stripped back and- Just the two of them. They're such a tight band. Um, Weary Tunesmith, that was kind of epic in its own right. That's a new, new band formed just for this record. It, it was that the Uber um, blend of Mark Gartman and Timmy Sachs Hogg and- Yes, and uh, Mim Parker and Rich Madsen and Jermaine. That's, um, that's a super group. Yeah, the super, the Duluth super group, <laughs> which was excellent. It really is. It is real epic. Yeah, when, it, when you hear it, you'll like it. <laughs> uh, and, and how about uh, Murder of Crows? What did they pick? Uh, one Too Many Mornings. I was not familiar with that song, I don't think. So that was a good surprise. And all recorded in this space? Yeah. So Sacred Heart has a presence on this disc to some degree. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, you can hear it. You can hear the room on probably just about every track, I'd say. So was the goal to get as many people involved as possible or give me the sense of the community piece of this, the snapshot of who's making music now? Yeah, it was uh, definitely as many people as, as possible uh, to get together to join in on this project like I, I guess it always has been. Uh, I don't know, it's been uh, 60 bands, 60 songs, you know, each band with two, three, four people in it, I suppose. So quite a few people over the yeah, years. Yeah, I don't know how many people. Some are repeats, obviously. Right. Um, individuals, not bands, though. Individuals within acts, and it has to be separate. And you can't, if you do it as a solo act, then you can't be solo on it again ever. That's kind of very stringent rules. You'll have to start a new band if you went back yeah. on. So. And you gotta at least have done a show or two, except for unless you're a super group, and then we'll make an exception. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about the release show, or tell me about where, how, this, how this goes out into the world. Well, uh, we have the... The last couple of sessions uh, tracking this week, Tom's got one tonight with Mary Bue and her band. He finishes mixing. It gets uh, Bernie Larson will be mastering and sequencing. Adam Swanson just finished the cover art. I believe Bill Pagel is going to be doing the liner notes. And then the release show is May 24th on Bob Dylan's birthday. How Eight o'clock. Perfect. How perfect yeah. is that? And who gets to play there? I mean, will anybody who is playing on the disc or? And it's anybody that's ever been on it. On, it. on any of the yeah. four yeah. projects. So. And probably some special guests as well. And so who do you think this is for? Is it for local music fans? Is it for Bob Dylan fans? You know, I think it's, uh, I think it's fans of the bands uh, and friends. And I think it's people that like Bob Dylan music and want to hear a new take. Um, especially, I think we've had success from people out, outside of Duluth. Um, Quite a few in Germany. I mean, online, it's kind of, online sales. Yeah, interestingly, that's kind of a. I mean, when we say a lot, I'm saying, oh yeah, we sold uh, 15 CDs last year. You know, but right. you know, it's kind of see, really interesting to see where people are buying them. And you know, we, again, we're not great promoters, we're, but we do. I think it's mainly for us. I don't know. We're, we're really big fans of Duluth music, and we want to show it off. And this is the way we do it. Well, thank you for all the all work right, thanks, that goes Karen. into it. Yeah. Well done, Tom. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing it. Thanks. This one's, uh, this one's called Tornado. Well, the sky, it got dark, it turned purple and green. Air got so thick, it got nasty and mean. Then it got quiet, just as still as can be. And I seen it come ripping through them old oak trees. Yep. Tornado going into town. Tornado gonna blow right on down. Tornado blowing into town. But you come and blow this old house down. Started on the east side and rambled over to the west Making its way through the streets and all the rest It began to look just like a devil in the clouds As it ripped overhead so ungodly loud Tornado rolled into town 
Tornado gonna blow right on down. Tornado blowing into town. Come and blow the soul house down. Made a sound like trains screaming down a thousand railroad tracks. So listen here, mister. I hope that old twister decides to never come back. all over people sat around and cried thought of their families and they thought of all that died they could have sat there just asked and wondered why but instead them folks they held their heads up high why tornado blow into town tornado gonna blow right on down tornado blowing into town come and blow so house down tornado blowing into town tornado gonna blow right on down tornado blowing into town would you come and blow the soul house down don't you come and blow the soul house down Thank you. Well, we are in the studio with Matt Ray. Thank you very much for Thank coming you for, over. Thank you for having me. So you may be familiar with Matt Ray as Matt Ray with an ensemble called Those Damn Horses. Here you are doing solo. What's more pressure, solo? <laughs> Is it freeing to be on by yourself or um, nerve wracking? It's, it's both, I think. You know, um, it's definitely uh, more nerve-wracking in the sense of you're 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 pretty naked there on stage. You know, there's not there's no other people to work with or perhaps hide behind. Um, at the same time, though, it's it's pretty. Uh, there's a lot of a freedom to kind of play whatever you want to play. You don't have to worry about other people knowing it or you know catching along and things like that. So. Um, so I, I kind of like both of it, I guess. I've been, I've been, uh, I started out with a lot of solo stuff and then kind of worked into bands and now I'm doing a little more solo stuff and I uh, enjoy both of, them, both of them quite a bit. Is the songwriting different? Uh, pro yeah, probably, I think. I think in, uh, in uh, the context of a band, um, I tended to write more songs that were, uh, that would be played in, by a band out in a, a bar or a festival, things, things like that, whereas, this type of music I get to play in some other places where people sit down and, and listen to you. So I, I would say it's a little different. Writing for the band tended to be more energetic, faster paced type stuff, I would say. And whereas this context, it's, I get to do kind of a little bit of everything, some slow, some medium, some faster stuff, and I, I enjoy that. And tell me a little bit about your songwriting process, melody or words first. Y usually it's the words. Um, Honestly, most of the time what happens is I come, I, I think of a, a line. I'll start with some line, I'll, and I'll, oh, that's a good one. I'll write that down. Um, and sometimes I never, ever get back to it. Um, and sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll use that line, and, and that'll be the basis of, of what I want to write about. And then um, as I'm writing it, I'm typically kind of working out a melody in my head, trying to figure out what, what would go with the, the lyrics that I'm, that I'm you know, writing. And every once in a while, I guess there's, there's a couple songs um, you know, where I, I do work it on, on, the, on the instrument first. Um, and then try to find you know, some lyrics that'll fit into that context and, that, and sound appropriate, I guess. There's a couple of songs tonight that have like a good humorous hook. Where, is that on purpose? Is that? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, like one of the things I really like about this, like I said, this kind of uh, music is people listen to it. They actually get to listen to the words and hear the words where um, a lot of times in a, in, a, in a large ensemble band type of context, loud bar, loud room, I don't think people hear so much the words as they do as the, the driving of the music. So, um, so it's kind of fun to actually have words and, and hear people react to, the, <laughs> react to them a little bit, whether it's laughing or, you know, wh whatever it is that we do. But, um, yeah. There's a lot of humanity in your music. Tell me a little bit about the inspiration. I really like that sort of observational, everyday kind of um, songwriting. I tend to kind of look more towards the Woody Guthrie type, you know, this is what I'm seeing going on <laughs> in my house, in my 
uh, community, in my you know world, whatever it is. Well, Ella May, Ella May, why do you sleep the day away? Won't you tell me, Miss Ella May? But Franklin, dear, oh Franklin, dear, I tell you now, if you're here, let me tell you, Franklin, dear. Ella May, Ella May, I heard you just singing away. I heard you singing, Ella May. Well, Franklin, dear, oh Franklin, dear, what did you see? What did you hear? What did you hear, Franklin, dear? Sing that way, go on, shake it, Ella May. Franklin, dear, Franklin, dear, I think the morning's coming near. Better stop now, Franklin, dear. Well, Ella May, Ella May, I see now why you sleep away. You sing all night, Miss Ella May. Still the night, still young, Franklin dear. Now Ella May, Ella May, you know that I just can't stay. I gotta ramble, Ella May. Oh, Franklin dear, Franklin dear, now tell me now, what do you fear? What do you fear, Franklin dear? Last questions. Yeah. One, you just recorded a new uh, album, solo album. Yes. What is it about? Where can we find it? Uh, I actually have two. I just released a, an EP th earlier this week, actually. Um, and that's available on, you can just go to my website, uh, mattray.org, and you can find it there. Um, and that's just a bunch of, so about eight, I think it's eight songs that I just, for whatever reason, never got around to actually recording on a, on a record or anything. So I just decided to kind of put them together and, and throw them out there. But over the course of the winter, I recorded a, a full-length album down in Minneapolis with uh, Ryan Young and uh, Ian Alexi from the uh, Hobo Nephews is, is producing it. He's been helping me kind of do some arrangements and things like that. So that's, that's been pretty interesting and kind of new for me um, to have that sort of input. And hopefully it'll be out in the summer. That's what I'm hoping for. It's, it's all done being recorded. <laughs> now it's just a matter of the other kind of the post-production stuff. So. And what's the future hold for Matt Ray? More solo, going back to a band, what, I, what do you think? You know, I, I really like doing the, the, the solo stuff qu quite a bit um, because there's you only kind of, kind of, it's only you you got to worry about, <laughs> you know? Um, but that said, I, I, I really do, I like playing in a, in a large band context and I can surely see that happening again, absolutely. At some point, it's just a lot of, a lot of fun. Um, but a little bit, a little bit of everything. You know, right now I'm just focusing on this, this kind of style of music, and see where that takes me. Great. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. scream we might do everything that's mean we might say things to each other we'll never forget and we might yell and we might shout we might wonder what it's all about we might do things to each other 
we haven't done yet But we'll be okay Gonna be okay And everything's gonna work out for us one day Things get bad, and things get worse We shout and cry, scream and curse One of these days everything's gonna be okay You say hide and I say seek And it happens every day of the week We raise our voices at each other and we walk away But I'll be me and you be you I don't know what in the world we're gonna do Guess for us that's the price we gotta pay But we'll be okay Gonna be okay And everything's gonna work out for us one day Things get bad and things get worse You shout and cry, scream and curse One of these days everything's gonna be okay You know, things get bad and things get worse You shout and cry, scream and curse One of these days everything's gonna be okay I said one of these days everything's gonna be okay (laughs) 